Voyager has been drifting quietly into the abyss for more than for decades. Far beyond the reach of planets, past the solar system's icy edge, into the great unknown. A ghost ship, guided by Earth's last whisper in the 1970s. We imagined it would fade quietly, its signal dimming into cosmic noise. But it didn't. It recently delivered something back. Not just data, not just a routine transmission, a message that made NASA scientists stop. A sudden spike, an unforeseen change, a clear line crossed, and with it, evidence that something long feared by humanity was true, though never spoken aloud. That the edge of our solar system is well defined. It is a wall, and beyond it, something changes. When Voyager to crossed what's known as the Heliopause the boundary where the Sun's influence ends and true. Interstellar space begins it was. Expected to be gradual, almost poetic. Scientists believed the solar wind would fade into the interstellar medium like a slow dissolving mist. But what Voyager to detected was the opposite. The transition wasn't slow. It was sudden. One moment, it was inside the sun's protective bubble. The next, it was beyond it. In a place where radiation, spiked by over 70% plasma density, jumped and the very structure of the magnetic field changed. It was like opening a door and stepping into an entirely different room. The readings were not understated. They were abrupt, sharp, as though a membrane had been pierced. What stunned researchers most wasn't just the presence of a boundary, but the accuracy of it. The sun's heliosphere, once thought to gently bleed into space, was now shown to be a distinct structure. A shield, one that had been protecting us from the commotion of the galaxy. And as Voyager to passed through, it confirmed something else. Our solar system is not simply suspended in space. It's protected by something. For decades, the idea of the heliosphere was considered theoretical, a bubble of plasma and magnetic energy shaped by the sun. But Voyager to demonstrated it wasn't just theoretical, it was vital. Inside this shield, conditions are relatively stable. Radiation is filtered. Space weather is manageable. Cosmic rays are diminished. But the moment Voyager to stepped out, all of that changed. The data showed intense particle energy, chaotic magnetic flux and hazardous amounts of galactic radiation. The solar system no longer looked like a lonely outpost, it was a fortress, and stepping beyond its walls meant entering an unregulated frontier. The soft boundaries and smooth curves once drawn in textbooks have been replaced with sharp spikes, hard numbers, and terrifying repercussions. Voyager 2 was no longer just drifting, it was being shot at. The sun's magnetic field was almost perfectly aligned with the interstellar field, a phenomenon no one expected. One that raised questions about how the galaxy's own structure might be shaping the space around us. The heliosphere wasn't just a field, it was a threshold, and crossing it had consequences. One of the most shocking revelations based on Voyager 2's data. The heliosphere isn't fixed. It breathes. It moves. It contracts and expands based on the sun's 11-year cycle, changing its shape and thickness as solar activity rises and falls. Both Voyager 1 and 2 crossed at different places, at different distances. The differences weren't accidental. They were shaped by the rhythm of the sun. This means the boundary of our solar system isn't a neat sphere. It's distorted comet shaped, with pulses rippling outward like the breath of a giant organism. At times, it stretches. At times, it recoils. If the solar wind weakens, the boundary draws closer to home, allowing more galactic radiation to seep inside. If it grows stronger, the barrier pushes outward, shielding us more effectively. The conclusion is disturbing. Earth's protection isn't permanent. It fluctuates. It can fail. And Voyager 2's sharp transition into the galactic medium revealed just how thin that veil truly is. The cosmos beyond is not void. It's brutal, unpredictable, and much closer than we imagined. In 2019, something strange happened. Voyager 2, dependable for more than 40 years, fell silent. 
Not for long, just for a few hours. But in those hours, every instrument stopped working. No orders were sent out from Earth. No updates were received. Then, just as mysteriously as it had gone dark, the spacecraft restarted and recovered. The official explanation, hardware aging, possibly a minor software glitch. But buried in the technical reports were notes of unexplained electromagnetic spikes. Right before the blackout, fluctuations in the magnetic field. Sharp surges in particle energy, albeit minor compared to the overall environment. The lingering question wasn't just what caused the glitch, but what Voyager to had just passed through. Some researchers suggested a pocket of highly energized plasma, a ripple from a distant supernova or a shockwave from some other interstellar event. But others quietly wondered if Voyager had crossed into a layer, a zone so alien that its presence couldn't have been predicted. In that case, it wasn't just a system failure. It was a response. When Voyager just stepped outside the heliosphere, it began recording fluctuations in radiation levels and plasma density that didn't align with any existing models. These weren't one-time spikes or sporadic irregularities. They were patterned, persistent, dynamic, almost like weather. The idea that space beyond the sun's reach might contain weather was once thought poetic exaggeration. But Voyager 2 was recording waves of high-energy particles, sudden directional changes in the magnetic field, and surges in galactic rays that echoed with a strange rhythm. At first, scientists attempted to connect these disturbances to known solar events, flares or coronal mass ejections that might have echoed through the heliopause. But when those timelines didn't match, they turned outward. The routines began aligning with distant galactic phenomena, possibly remnants of supernovae or the force of enormous stellar winds far away from our system. It was as if Voyager had stepped foot into a bustling area, a kind of interstellar sea with invisible currents and unseen tides. And now that the probe was outside the sun's protective barrier, it was fully exposed, floating through a storm we never expected to find. One of the most unexpected results from the crossing of Voyager 2 was the close to perfect symmetry between the Sun's magnetic field and the galactic magnetic field beyond. This revelation left theorists scrambling. For years, turbulence had been predicted by models at a magnetic clash known as the Heliopause, a blending zone where solar and galactic forces would twist into chaos. But that's not what Voyager found. The transition was smooth, too, as if the fields were already there synchronized. Two the possibilities emerged, both alarming in equal measure. Either the region beyond our solar system had been shaped and bent by the sun's outflow over time, slowly sculpting itself into alignment, or the region itself was already naturally aligned. That would mean the Sun and its surrounding interstellar neighborhood had grown within a magnetic harmony that possibly spans a much larger section of the galaxy than was initially thought. It also means cosmic rays might flow in more easily when fields are aligned, creating efficient channels into our solar system during periods of quiet solar activity. This wasn't just a magnetic surprise, it was a fundamental shift. The concept that the galaxy's structure might already accommodate or even anticipate the sun's magnetic reach poses a challenge to every theory of interaction between stars. Suddenly, space didn't seem so chaotic. It appeared organized. As data continued streaming from Voyager 2, a whisper began circulating among theorists and mission insiders, one they weren't ready to put on record but couldn't ignore what if the heliosphere wasn't just a boundary? What if it behaved like a checkpoint? The sharpness of the transition, the perfect alignment of the fields, and the consistency of radiation spikes across the board for both Voyager 1 and to suggested not only a physical interface but a responsive one. S. Come proposed the boundary might be adaptive, adjusting its intensity or location in response to pressure from either side. However, there was a more controversial notion that the boundary itself might serve as a kind of galactic tripwire a region where entering objects are exposed, measured, and recorded. 
This was no claim of aliens, no assertion of intelligent design, but simply the observation that Voyager's arrival sounded organized, layered, and responsive. And if that is true, it would mean every object that exits the solar system doesn't just leave the sun's domain, it announces its presence beyond the galaxy. Voyager may have unknowingly triggered more than just measurements. It may have sent a signal that revealed more about us than we intended. Voyager to carries a message attached, a golden disc etched with humanity's diagrams, sounds, greetings, and music a beautiful attempt at interstellar diplomacy. But within that disk are specific instructions, how to locate Earth, how to read the disk, how to understand who we are. For decades, this was celebrated as a symbol of hope. But in light of Voyager 2's discoveries, some now see it differently. If the boundary between our system and the galaxy isn't a gradual fade but a clearly defined edge, if it responds and watches, then what does it mean that we attached a map to our home on the very probe that pierced that edge? Were we extending a hand or revealing a vulnerability? With every transmission Voyager to sends, we confirm our intelligence, our technology, and our location. And if something out there is listening, or worse, replying, the golden record may become more than a message. It may be an invitation, one we cannot take back. Voyager 2 wasn't supposed to survive this long. It was not intended to be returned revelations that would shake our understanding of the cosmos. And yet, here we are, decades after its launch, traversing the icy silence of space. It has pierced a boundary that was never meant to be crossed so easily. And what it found wasn't the peaceful void we once imagined. It found change. It found pressure. It found structure. It proved what numerous scientists quietly feared. We are not in our solar system floating aimlessly in a void. We are shielded. And outside that shield, the rules begin to bend. Radiation intensifies. Fields align. Particles shift. Time and space distort. The boundary isn't soft, it's sharp. And what lies beyond it feels less like a sea and more like a gate, a cutoff point into a realm that doesn't care about Earth's blue skies or our gentle sun, a realm where cosmic storms rage and fields move at frequencies we are just beginning to comprehend. And then there's the golden record, a beautiful, reckless symbol of our optimism sailing into deep space with our coordinates, our biology, and our identity carved in gold. A greeting or a flare sent across a line that we now know is significantly more complex and more receptive than once dreamed. As a result, the question persists in the silence between stars. Was Voyager 2 merely an explorer, or was it a signal? Comment below with your thoughts. Do you believe that Voyager 2 discovered something unnatural at the edge of our solar system? Was the heliosphere simply a physical barrier, or something more? If this video made you rethink the boundaries of our universe, or gave you chills, subscribe, ring the bell, and spread the word with someone who dares to listen.